Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am reviewing two products from Juvia's Place. Sorry for the up close and personal, I'm going to be using both products. Today I'm going to be reviewing the Juvia's Place foundation and concealer. The foundation is $20. The, sorry, the concealer, oh, I have it upside down, sorry. The concealer is $14. I've already cleansed my face. I put on a light moisturizer from Walmart. It's called Equate. It's a very light daily moisturizer. And now I'm going to be using the e.l.f., the famous that Jeffree Star crashed the website, e.l.f., the Poreless Putty Primer. I saw on Instagram, e.l.f. said that their Poreless Putty Primer is back in stock. Sorry if I'm looking over to the side here. I have a, a mirror that is a very big mirror that mag has magnification so I can see what I'm doing. I know I look a little crazy without eyebrows, but I wanted to give this, I wanted to see how much of a coverage this gives. Just using a little bit. I usually try to put a little extra primer right here where I get dry spots. It's a, it's a good primer. It doesn't have feel like silicone. It just feels smooth. I exfoliated my skin this morning with, uh, it's called Kaolin Clay. And you put it on, you leave it on for 20 minutes, you scrub it in your face, and you rinse it off by the company Found. I have them in my playlist down below. I think it's the third video down from this one. And... It is a good cleanser. It's a little pricey. It was on discount for $7 and I at Walmart, and I believe the regular price is $10 or $12. Might be more. It's a very good cleanser. I only use it twice a week, but I don't know. I'm still undecided whether I'm going to continue to buy it, even though I use it so little. If it's worth spending that kind of bougie money on it when my other cleansers are only two and three dollars and they do just as well by equate okay now that this is sitting what i'm going to do is i'm going to use a, a foundation brush on the left side to see the coverage and then i'm going to use my beauty sponge on the right hand side and you can see on the camera i have a lot of darkness under my eyes this started last year I just used the primer on my face, but I have, as you can see, I have rosacea. It goes this way, almost like a triangle. What it is is, and then I have a little bit of discoloration, a little more red here. I have tried so many foundations that have said that they are full coverage, and I've never had one that could cover me without making me look heavy or a mask. So here is the Juvia's Place. I have color... Merrick, Maricow, seven, I'm sorry, I don't have my glasses, seven, seven, ten, Maricow. The website didn't, it has very good descriptions of the foundations, but this one has a peach undertone. There was nothing in the light section that had pink undertones, and that's what I use. Now, this is what the container looks like. And I'm going to open it up and see if it, oh, it has the protective little seal inside, so i got to pull that out. i got to pull that off. Okay. Oh, oh don't break it. Don't break, sorry. <laughs> okay, I had the little protective seal, which is great. I have not even looked at this primer, uh, this foundation yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some of it on my, I'm going to put only half on here in case it dries. It is a matte foundation. I'm going to do half with the brush. Sorry if I look over this way. I have a very big mirror, magnified mirror. Ooh, wow. You can tell it's thick. I bought this because I was watching Nikki tutorials 
and I always like Juvia's Place. I've been looking lately at their, ooh, wow, that's really thick. I've been looking at their eyeshadow palettes that look beautiful. I like a lot of color. So this, I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna use the brush on this side. And Nikki Tutorials had it on and she was using it and she said it was full coverage. And she also had concealer. She said it was full coverage and she did a wear test and it wore beautiful on her. She does not have a lot of texture. She has redness on her skin, but I have a lot of texture from acne scars and the rosacea. I have a lot of it when I go like this. You can see a lot of it. I've dermatologist, I've had it tried to correct it. They, you know, you can only do so much with uh, rosacea. I mean, I've been on creams. I've been on, I they, they exfoliated and they did a peel one time. And it irritated my skin. Sorry if I look like I'm grabbing it like I'm <laughs> a monster. Ooh. Wow. This is, let me get up and close. This is very thick. She said it was thick but full coverage, but when she used the beauty blender, it sheared it out a little bit. And that's what I'm probably going to have to do with this. It is very thick. What I try to do is I try not to buff. Because what it is, is it makes the product less on my skin when I buff. Especially on my cheeks. And then my redness starts to peek in, even with concealer, no matter what I do, concealer powder, the redness always peeks in. And I have large pores, and heavier makeup always sits in it and makes my pores look large. Now, I'm probably going to have to buff this out with the Beauty Blender to make it look a lot less cakey. This is the full coverage it gives. I have a lot, I mean, I don't think I'll ever find a, a foundation that's full coverage that won't make me look cakey and sit in my, in my, you know, in my trouble areas. I haven't used Dermacol, my daughter has tried it. She, I've looked it up on Amazon but the problem is some of it is counterfeit, some of it's fake, and I've seen it anywhere from three to four dollars for Dermacol all the way up to twenty-five dollars. Okay. This is what it looks like. To me, it looks a little heavy. You can see it with the brush. It sits in my troubled areas right there, my roughness. And it does a little look a little cakey. Okay. Now, let's try it on the other side with the Beauty Blender, or Beauty Sponge, sorry, it's not a true Beauty Blender. Maybe, ooh, maybe I used a little too much because Nikki said a little bit goes a long way. Oops, I think I did use a little too much. I'm just going to have to bounce my life away. Oh, wow, I did use way too much. Uh-oh. Okay, well, we'll see what happens if I have to wipe some of it off. It is very... You see, it is full coverage. At least, I mean, I've had full coverage that made it look like it was like medium to sheer. I mean, you know, some say full coverage and I'm like, this is not even anywhere near full coverage. It is a lot better. The thickness reminds me of my Makeup Revolution stick foundation. It has the same consistency Makeup Revolution foundation that I have here. Makeup Revolution. You can see it. This stick foundation has the same feel. This stick foundation has the same consistency. And when I use this with a beauty blender, I have to, of course, use very little. 
but I have to pounce it. Sometimes I even have to wet a second sponge to really go over it, even with using just a little bit because it's so, I don't know, it's so heavy and makes me look cakey. So lately what I've been doing is I've been using my lighter cover girl clean foundation. I think it's the oil free. I can't remember. I have a few of them and I've been using also um, wet and wild. I can shear that out just because the cakiness, I get so tired of the cakiness and I set it with just a tiny little powder underneath my eyes. And a little right here because I seem it seems to slip a little bit around my mouth. And I don't like the powdery effect it gives, even with setting spray and moisturizing spray and everything. Now, this is what it looks like. It looks cakey, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sponge, go on the other side and see if I could shear it out a little bit. To me, it is thick. It's, the coverage is pretty good compared to a lot of the other foundations I have. I'm just going to shear it out just a little bit. Go always down your neck so you don't look like you have a mask or demarcation, they call it. I especially don't like foundations that are heavy around my lips because it makes it look... See, it sits in the foundation, it sits in the lines. But for demonstration for now, I'm not going to be too hard. I am shearing it out a little bit. I don't know if you can tell. It is a lot less thick. Okay. I think this is okay. Well, a lot did go on the sponge because I did overdo it. It's I didn't realize that Less is more, and I keep forgetting that sometimes. <laughs> okay. Now, let's try the concealer. The concealer I have is in Magic. In Magic, number 19, I believe it says. Let's open this up. It doesn't look too bad. Sometimes you got to let the foundations and concealers sit on your skin and warm up a little bit. Now this is the color. I bought it. It didn't, I didn't see anything that had like a pink undertone. I wanted something close to my skin color. Well, I wanted something a little darker to cover up the under eye. So that's my problem. Beautiful doe foot applicator. Looks like a lot of product. This is the bottle. Very nice packaging, very sleek, really nice, okay, doe foot applicator. Of course, I'm going to wipe some off and I'm going to use very little. And I have it a little darker than my, than my skin because I want to try to cover this up. And I have a little bit of redness sometimes in when you see me in real life right here on my nose. And I don't know how that all of a sudden popped up. Okay, just right there. I know some people like to take it and go down here and go up here. And I'll do that even though I usually don't. Go down the nose. It also feels a little on the thick side. It looks like it's doing pretty good with coverage. Let me pull back a little bit. Very nice packaging. Both of them are very, you know, simple, nice. I love the color. Very nice. Now I'm going to take my under eye. This is what I use usually for my under eye and it is dry. And I'm going to bounce this out. I like to use it dry, I don't like to use it wet because it just takes the, I know dryness soaks up product, but when I use it wet and I try to do concealers and it doesn't matter what one I have, the problem is it takes away the product. And I know the dry sponges take away product too, but I don't know, I just like the way this works better than a wet sponge. Okay. That blended in really good. I mean, it's nice and creamy. Let's try the under eye. Both 
blends out really nice. I get those fine lines underneath my eyes. And what I do is I, after the concealer warms up, I have to tap it with my finger very lightly before putting a little bit of powder, a little bit of um, uh, air, Cody Air Spun under my eyes. Very little just to set it because I have dry under eyes and I have dry eyelids and I have dry right here on my eyebrow, but sometimes I do need it slips a little bit. And I do like just a little bit of powder, just getting in the corners and getting over here. I don't want any. Ooh. Now, this is under natural lighting. I'm trying to get under it. I think, let me get a little up close and personal. I think it did really well under my eyes. Wow. Yes, I have those. You can see the line here. But no matter what I've done, I've used so many concealers. It always gathers. So what I do is I try to bounce it out with my finger a little bit. And then, of course, I always set it with, a little, like I said, a little bit of Cody. Sometimes it's still during the day. Oh, look, and I get that right there, that line right here. And I get it right. Yeah, you can see it. With age, I mean, and I pull just easy. Don't pull too much because you don't want to make your lines worse. And I only noticed these lines the last year. I didn't have them before. I'm in my late 40s. Even though I'm I'm still pouncing it. The color, the payoff is still there. Look at that. I don't see. Let me pull back. I don't see the darkness. There's I have a little bit of swelling. But as this warms up, sometimes that gets a little bit better. Wow. I only see the little line. And yes, I have a little bit of puffiness. No matter what I did today, it was, I've been up for hours. Now, what I'm going to do is go around my mouth with the dryer sponge because as I'm getting older, I get those, I get a few lines and I have a line here and I have a line here. And I'm looking to see. You can see the roughness I have right here. This is looking really good as it's warming up. Wow. It's not sticky. It's finishing down. Wow. It is. It's not sticky. And I haven't even put powder on it. If this completely has a little bit of feel. But it is drying down. If I feel like I would have to powder anywhere else besides under my eyes, and I put a little here and I put a little powder here, and I stay away from this area. Sometimes I put a little here and a little here. You know, I go very lightly. Wow, this is really, it's really warming up. And it feels, wow. It is drying down. It's almost dry. I have very little tackiness, including right here. Wow. My makeup revolution takes forever to dry down. I mean, sometimes I'm sitting here and I have to use a fan and blow a fan, a hand fan on me just to get it to dry down. So when I put powder on, it doesn't, you know, you don't want to put powder on top of all your foundation when it's wet it just goes you know I always try to I always wait until it sets and sometimes it takes me a while wow this is really really good look a lot of the redness didn't come through yes I have some redness you can but I've had worse if I took 
the sometimes I'll concentrate a little bit more because the brush still has foundation on it sometimes I'll go a little bit I'll go over this a second time and the powder I try to keep powder off this area I love Cody Airspun and I like CoverGirl and I like um, uh, I've used e.l.f. I don't have any more of that and that powder was okay but you got to be very easy with it yeah my redness is concentrated right here I mean I know I'll never be porcelain mask totally flat because of the redness I can deal with that I don't mind some peeking through but after an hour or two I don't want to see it peeking through and it feels like I wasted all that foundation and powder and everything just to make it look nice and then it's like boom even and then when I put on um, blush sometimes this just gets so red and I'm like oh everything else is is nice and then this is just like <laughs> you know I'm trying not to um I'm trying not to let the redness come through. I don't mind sun. Uh, sorry. Foundation lips. or The under eye. Now we've been here looking at the under eye for about four or five minutes. That is completely dry. But it's not. I don't have tackiness. I'm going like this and there's no tackiness. It's dry but it's not doesn't feel tight look at that now yes you could see the line yes you could see a little bit of puffiness and you, I have that line I don't I can't get rid of it Wow how fast it dries down but it doesn't feel heavy like heavy heavy and it doesn't feel tight it feels matte it has a matte finish but it's not that matte that looks terrible. Wow, this is really good. I am going to turn around and I'm going to use it uh, for the next week. What I'll do is I'll do an update video on it if I find any problem areas. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna leave this on at least six hours and see how it is. I'm not gonna powder, I'm not gonna do anything. I'm home, I'm not gonna do anything else. I want to see if it breaks down in my two trouble areas. Breaks down here, breaks down here, and breaks down right on my T-zone. Usually right, right here I start to get it and then it goes crossed under, around my nose, which looks hella good. And I always get foundation breaks up right here where I have troubled redness and sometimes dryness. Okay, so we're 23 minutes in. I know this is a very long video and I'm sorry about that, but I really wanted to give you a chance to look at it at rosacea skin. Um, heavily textured. I have a combination skin. I have dryness. I don't feel. It's not tight. It looks, especially, wow, especially around my eyes. There's no stickiness. It's dried. There's nothing. There's nothing. Look. There's nothing there except what I have on my tips because I used my finger tips to put it on. There's nothing. Look. Look. Nothing. My makeup revolution sometimes takes forever. Um, and even fanning it and doing everything, leaving it sit for 20 minutes, it still feels tacky and, and stiff. This is really good. So what I'll do is I'll put an update underneath about my six-hour wear test. Let me buff that and see if that looks really good wow that looks really good I have a, always a redness or a little problem right there that's loaded I can't see it wow and even in my magnification mirror so you can start to see the this is not the foundation it's my skin I have roughness right here wow and look at my under eyes 
Okay, so this is a very long video and I really want to give you a really good look at what foundation looks on someone with rosacea, combination skin, um, heavily textured acne, um, old acne scars and just roughness. And I'm in my late 40s and this is what it looks like. I will have an um, update underneath and I will tell you what happens after six hours. Did it break apart? Does it? Did it look shiny? I have nothing else and I'm going to leave it just like this. My under eyes, the darkness is, look, that looks, to me, that looks terrific. I don't have the, I don't see the darkness. Now, putting a little powder underneath will make this a little bit less um, see-through. But wow, there's nothing. It's dry. So, I want to thank you for watching my very long video. I'm sorry that it's so long, but I wanted to give you a, a really good look, in-depth look, and not just a video that's only five or six minutes going, okay, it looks great, and this is really in-depth. This is with someone with a lot of problems, skin, and I couldn't, I couldn't, yes, a little bit of my, I couldn't be happier. I like the way it dries down, but it doesn't dry down cakey. It doesn't dry down stiff. I have a lot of movement. I like it. Wow. To me, it's a hit. I'm going to use it for the next seven days, and I will do an update video describing any other problems. Um, you know, when I put products over it to see if will the foundation come off as I put products on it? Will it break down? I will give you a seven day update about that. That will be a totally different video. But underneath, I will give you the link for Juvia's Place. I will have a description underneath on how much the products are and how many, how many ounces you get on each product. I like the packaging. I like the doe foot applicator. Everything feels nice. I like that. It has a lot of product. Nice doe foot. Solid packaging. Everything looks really good, and I'm very happy with this purchase. And I will continue to use it, and I'll give you an update video, like I said. So thank you very much for watching my video. Please comment, um, rate, subscribe. If you, Please comment if you've used Juvia's Place and you have any concerns or you have any problems or you think you can give me some tips on how to make my rosacea and, and some of my lines look a little bit better if you have tips or tricks and please subscribe and uh, hit the ring, the bell over the subscribe um, notifications so you're notified of when I put up the next two videos. Thank you very much for watching this 27 minute video, but I wanted to give you a really in-depth look on what it looks like on a real person with real troubled skin and someone who tries to buy products to make themselves look a little bit better. Thank you very much for watching my video. See you in the next one. Thank you. Bye.